day folks so today i want to begin our live with a very serious update um today we dedicated everything in body science lab to andrew kishore who transformed the lives of not just every bangladeshi but every person around the world through his music through his songs and through his uh, voice for the people of bangladesh in fact i myself have a memory with andrew kishore in the recording studio where we recorded a tribute to Muhammad Yunus with a song that my dad himself wrote. Uh, so you can check that out and uh, on the Thinker. Uh, the update will be posted shortly on Barry Science Fab's uh, homepage. So uh, today we are on lecture number 61 of Linear Algebra. Uh, from the, as per the request of some of our viewers, <laughs> uh, we've received uh, quite a few problems that our viewers want us to work through. and. Um, uh, we're going to be working through some of these problems today. So, uh, is it just completely dedicated to the viewers? Uh, yes, so I, I'll be, uh, you know, this is a tribute to my viewers because we have almost a trillion viewers. A trillion? Okay. Not even a billion, so, not even a, a 100 billion people. Okay. So my do now is gonna be quite simple today, okay? Um, it's, uh, I have my do now right here, and uh, we're just gonna go ahead and write it down, okay? So, here is the do now. For which value, for which value, so by the way, before I start my do now, I would like to begin by saying that all the problems you're about to see today, um, you should be able to solve, because, I mean, if the first 60 lectures didn't help you, I don't know what will. You know, quite simple. <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and do that. For which values of A, okay, so let's, uh, let's take a look. For which a value of A, does the following system, does the following system, does the following, so uh, make sure um, that I don't make any mistakes, folks, because, you know, I am a human being, I'm not perfect. Although uh, I've never made a mistake before, I can still make one uh, while I'm doing elimination or some other linear algebra uh, mechanisms. Okay, so why don't we go ahead and write uh, the system we're referring to, x plus 2y plus 3 as z is equal to 4, 2x plus 3y plus 4z is equal to 3, and lastly, 2x plus 4y plus az, a being the variable of interest, equals 2. So here is the problem, okay? I'm going to read the problem again because uh, one student here is seriously and depressed that he cannot solve it. Okay, now, I don't want to see depressed students in my classroom, but I do like to see humble students in my classroom, which we don't have any of. Okay, so let's see. Which value of a... Uh, makes the following system fail to have any solutions. So first of all, do we know what a system is? Wait a second. I, I need to notice something. The ABC, uh, the ABC uh, are the matrix to be, the matrix for the system to be 1, 2, 3, 2, 3, 4, 2, 4, A. Ah, yes. We like to keep students humble in that respect. Um, so, any ideas how we can start the do now? Would anyone like to try? So, here, here, here. Please try. Uh, I'll, I'll get you a blue marker if I can find any. So please come up to the board. Good luck. Yes, yes. Do you want a hint? Yes. Or do you want to give up? Hint. Okay. So, hint is um, use a matrix. Mm -hmm. uh, write the coefficient matrix. Please start from the left. We don't have space, sir. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. You have no space. I'm being generous enough by letting you come here. One, two, three, four, three, two, four, eight, two. Okay. okay, so I think you've done enough. So please head back to your seat and um, give me the marker. Okay, so um, what did we do? Our goal is to find a value of A such that this system has no solutions, right? 
So, first of all, we have to solve this system of equations. How do we solve a system of equations? Well, we use matrices, right? We use something called Gauss-Jordan elimination, which you might have heard of, or otherwise it's also known as Gaussian elimination. Jordan actually had nothing to do with it and was credited after Gauss's death for no reason whatsoever. Now, um, how do we perform elimination on this matrix? Um, does anyone have any ideas? Do we? Oh, of course not. Uh, one student is already sleeping. Um, how do we perform elimination on this? Any idea? Wait, so we have the coefficient matrix, so... Yeah, well, let me... Uh, if you forget how to do elimination, always recall the checklist. Okay, the checklist. Elimination checklist. Uh, okay, remember, the first thing we want in elimination is what? To solve for... To solve for, uh, solve for the variable. Oops. But aren't for, we trying to find a value for a where there's no solution? Right. Okay. So in this case, our goal is to solve for a, right? So what we have to do is get what type of form. When we eliminate matrices, what kind of form do we want to achieve? Um, the identity. No. 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 Uh, upper triangle. Upper triangular. Yes. <laughs> That's the word I like to hear, folks. Upper triangular. See, that's why. Me and me and Okay. Okay. Upper triangular. Okay. So, how do we achieve upper triangular? By elimin by elimination. Right. So, what do we have to eliminate? We have to eliminate these three, right? Right. So, how do we go ahead and eliminate that? What is the first number I should eliminate? Um. So we multiply the the row fast row by negative two. Okay, so what will the new matrix become? Uh, zero. Zero. So the uh -huh. first one, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And then the second one is uh, zero. Zero. So uh, negative four, so negative one. Negative one. So, uh, hold on. Uh, mm -hmm. Negative two, negative six, negative two. Negative two. And negative eight, uh, negative eight, negative five. Negative five. And what about the last row? Two, four, eight. Yeah, two, four, eight. And don't forget the two on the right hand side. Okay. Now, uh, the sleeping student has reawoken because I've enlightened him. And so we have to eliminate the other one. Right. So, um, okay. So what is the? Let's eliminate the other one. What do we get? Yeah, I'm ready. Um. What, what were we uh, doing? Sir, I'm the teacher. I would like you to come up here and start writing. Oh my god. Um. Wait, 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 wait. What? Um. Hold up. Airplane mode, please. Okay, of course he forfeited because he can't search it up. Okay, so, um, Alex, oh, Alex raised his hands. Yeah, <laughs> what happened? How do we, how do we, oh, turn that one to the zero? Yeah. Okay, let's, uh, let's uh, multiply the fast rows by two again. Okay. And add the fast rows and the third rows. So, if so, I do that, what do I get? So, I'm gonna have, we're gonna have zero. Zero. Uh, and negative four, negative four is negative four positive four zero. Goodness. Okay. And negative six and a. Negative six minus a is. Minus six minus, minus a. Wait wait wait. So we are multiplying this by minus two, right? Yeah. So what do we get here then? Negative minus six. six and then a. So what if we add those? Negative on? negative six plus a. Plus a. No a minus six. Okay, a minus six. Oh, okay. right, a minus six. Okay, because this guy otherwise is gonna keep bothering us. Rude. And the right hand side is uh, negative eight and two, so negative six. Negative eight and two make negative, negative six. six. Okay, so now we have achieved upper triangular form, right? So okay, upper triangular form so far. So 
Good, but uh, Alex has just raised his hands once again. Alex, what would you like to say? Okay. And uh, Alex? Okay. Uh, hmm? So, so what was... So we eliminated... We performed elimination on this matrix. Oh, uh, we have to do one more, right? We have to do one more, right? No, so we have upper triangular form, right? Okay, yeah. This is our upper triangle. But have we solved the question? What does the question ask us to do? Uh, uh, which value? Find the value of the a system has failed to have solution. So when, when does the system fail to have solution? What does it mean to fail? Well, we see one example of failure right here, but what what does it mean for a system? Zero x plus zero y plus zero z equals zero. No. Yeah. No. So uh, we want to go zero 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 zero. So when a system has no solutions, right? What does that mean? If you are, you can't find x y or z. Well, that's exactly the question we're gonna tackle in our exit set. Wait, what? There's no lesson? There's no lesson? Relax. What? Yeah. <laughs> so, all three of these equations, what are they, the equations of? Fungus. Fungus. Excuse me. I'm afraid I'm losing control. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, what happened? You know, so, uh, Alex, you know what you're saying? We broadcast the live millions of people. So, what does it mean for a system to fail to have solutions? Well, what do each of these equations represent ge uh, geometrically? Uh, one, two, three, two, three, four. Christ's sake. I ask, <laughs> what does each equation... What does each equation here represent geometrically? They represent uh, lines. Oh, they represent not, lines. Not, not. not lines. Lines? Lines? The span. The span is plane. <laughs> lines? The equation of a line in 3D space is a point plus some multiple of a vector. But this is not a line. These are planes. Okay. Because they're in the form ax plus by plus cd, okay. tz equals d. So when a system has no solutions, that means all three of the planes never intersect, right? Mm -hmm. So that can mean all three planes are multiples of each other, right? So when does that happen? When are all three planes multiples of each other, or when do two of the planes... Why are you laughing? Yeah, okay. So, um, the system will fill tap. <laughs> okay. Okay, folks. We're at the last step, okay? So, the system will fail to have solutions when a minus 6 is uh, negative 6? When it's 0. Okay? Okay. Because that means this will have no coefficient. The z variable will have no coefficient. 0 is the coefficient. 0 because cannot... Because a minus 6 is equal to negative 6? No, because if 0 is a coefficient here, you'll have a free variable. So imagine, if you have 0 z equal to anything, minus 6 for example, then that means zero equals z equals 0. But we can't have that. So this is one of the rules you have to remember, that our pivot cannot be zero. So if we set our final pivot to zero, a minus six to zero, what does that mean? That means if a is six, then there should be a failure to have any solutions for this matrix. So I want to help you visualize what that means, okay? okay. So let me show you. No, no. So let's say... Please, student. I'm going to give you three examples, and I want you to tell me in which case there is a failure to have solutions. 
Okay, so no more matrix algebra. We solved our question, we got A is equal to six. Now I want, to, uh, want you to look at it visually. So, in our first scenario, we're gonna have three planes as such. Here's a plane, um, here's another plane, and here's another plane. Try your best to visualize it, okay? Now, is there a failure to have a solution here? Is there a solution here or not? Is there? Why not? Is there a solution? They're not, they're not intersecting. They're all right. the same. Right. The three planes never intersect. They're all uh, the same plane, but translated. Maybe, the maybe if I if I give it a little more uh, uh, accuracy when I draw it, you will see that these three planes never no, intersect. No, no need. I have three D running okay. in my head. Wait. So you can see that these three planes do they ever intersect? Yeah. No, no, they're just sitting on top of each other, right? Imagine you have three pieces of paper just sitting on top of each other. If they never intersect, then there will never be a solution. So that's what it means for, for there to be a failure of solution. Likewise, even if two of the planes intersect, if two planes intersect, what, what geometric object do we get? Two planes intersect? Yeah. Uh, a space? No, we get a line. Or well, two planes intersect, we get a line. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I understand. Right? Because uh, when two planes intersect, we get a line, right? Yeah. Wait, you can. Sorry, just like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sure. So I can. Let me show you visually what that what that means. So, so give let's me say, a dry No, no, no. So let's say we have two pieces of paper. They can represent our planes. If they intersect, what kind of geometric object do they intersect at? A line. Uh, line. A line. Yeah. Okay. I, I get and it. I get it. So is there a solution here? Um, is there yes, a solution? Yes. Alex, what do you think? Solution? Yes. No. There is no solution as long as there's no point. All three planes have to intersect at a common point. Okay? So, so for example, here, here is one scenario of where there would be an actual solution. Okay? So, all three, all three planes intersect at a common point, right? Only then is there a solution. Okay? Now, when do all three of the planes intersect at a common point? When do you think? Do you, does, does anyone have any ideas here? Okay, well, three planes, I'll tell you uh, the answer. Three planes intersect at a common point when the following condition is met, okay? So let's say I represent each of the three planes with their formal equations, okay? So let's say I write ax plus Student, please, A1, B1, uh, C1, Z is equal to D1. Likewise, my second plane will be A2X, B2Y plus C2Z equals... Why does Z always the same? The, th this is a variable, student. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The coefficient is the only thing that changes. Let's Lab to fall in love with math and science, especially programming.